Hey everybody and welcome to this week's episode. We have got some great sailing coming up um, in a few seconds time but we've had a delivery and we thought we'd just talk about it for 30 seconds. Um, people have been generously donating to us on our coffee account and this is one of the first things we've ordered up and it will be shown in a video in a bit and you'll get to see what it is. So uh, just a, a quick thank you to some more of our coffee supporters who we haven't managed to squeeze in yet. We've got Kevin C, we've got Wendy from I think it's Sailing Lattice, we've got Peter and Marilyn, we've got Simon from Scorcher and we've got the mysterious MC who <laughs> we don't quite know anything more about except that he likes caravans as well as boats. So with that it's straight on to our sailing video and we'll talk about this later. Well we're at anchor and uh, we're trying to get a forecast so in my camera goes and it's gone up the mast yeah so um i'm going to get another rope so that we can pull the no, uh, i'm going to use that i'm going to use the uh, flag hoist it'll take it up to the first spread oh that'd be more than adequate so we're just going to put it on the flag ho hoist and uh hopefully it will go up and then we'll be able to get something on the port spreader ah the place of less priority because the starboard spreader is for courtesy flags <laughs> Okay, so Beverly is putting it on the port spreader uh, because it's of less priority than the starboard spreader. But uh, I've just realised she has not got her anchor ball up. But we'll just uh, we'll put um, we'll put the mobile phone up the mast instead. <laughs> to say that was a failure we tried we tried to get some kind of signal oh this is why um i mean so we're in reasonable location at the moment we're in jora but this is one of the reasons that Pavili and i prefer paper charts or at least have paper charts because there's lots and lots of places that you just don't get signal there is no signal um you know, so having backups and things like that is always a good plan. Well, Beverly and I are just enjoying the uh, our lunchtime anchorage. And um, where we are, we've got very little tide. But just further out, uh, the white caps appear. Um, and basically, um, that's you where know, the tide You can also see flowed. the line of the tide as well. It's, it's, it's more disturbed and darker than it is in here. Yes, um, just out there. So for what we have at the moment, which is a um, north going tide. And a north going wind. And a north going wind. Uh, this is an excellent little anchorage. Now, when the tide flips, the tide would actually be coming straight into this. Um... Yeah, but we've got two hours for the tide flips. Oh, yeah, we have. But I'm just in case people want to come here to Lag Bay. <laughs> um you know the tide would probably be coming into this bay so not so good on the other tidal stream but for what we are now it's perfect it's doing us a great job but also it's got a very very nice little beach just over there but if you are a courting couple behave yourselves when you're down on the beach because unlike those two over there at the minute they are not alone they might think they are but we do not have to tell people that. I'm not showing them anything, just tell them that those two over there. <laughs> Honestly. I would just rather they were more discreet. <laughs> Behind a bush or something. <laughs> I was going to talk to the viewers about our other conversation. What about my mum's dog? No, about destination and journey. Ah, oh, we'll do that some other time. I'll make an episode about it. Okay. Well, we'll start the debate, if nothing else, and we will do an episode on it. Is it more important the destination, or is it more important the journey? So, viewers and comments down below, and then we might do a, a winter talk on it 
see what our viewers think um, and stuff like that. I'm just looking at the landscape over there actually and I'm thinking to myself that for at least one couple the destination was more important because the journey went through a really <laughs> infested swamp over there. I mean look at all those reeds that, that, and fer ferns and things that must that must be really really boggy over there. <laughs> well it must be. It must be. <laughs> Anyway, I'll take some photographs of the tide. <laughs> So I just got on with it, but it was definitely a bit kelpy. You gotta fix it, eh? If in panic or in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. Not yeah. a lot of room for that up there. No, there was not enough room for screaming and shouting. It was a case of just getting on with it. Well, there's plenty of room for screaming and shouting. I've got more room for running in circles. Yeah. Here you go. Boom, boom, secure. Yeah. Bring the bobby, do that. He's uh, um, But anyway, we're sailing again. Um. And I'm going at what speed now? 3.8. 3.8. It'll do us. It'll do us. We can probably well, do a lot better, but with this wind on this direction, I think we'll be okay. <sighs> uh, we've also got a boat ahead of us. I think we'll pass our stern if we just pull this. If we speed up, I think we'll ram side on. <laughs> Please, no ramming on the boats. Just in case I need to ease off. But <laughs> not that I'm looking for them, but apparently there's a couple of a pod of porpoises here as well. They've gone. Oh they've gone, they've vanished. <laughs> They're behind us long ago. We're doing six knots. <sighs> but yeah, the seas have got some white caps, but that could be a combination of two things. Um, the tide has just changed. Right here I think it's depth because the tide, the sea looks very different further in. Well, I'm on crew duty today and uh, one of the things you have to do on crew duty is keep uh, everybody uh, supplied in food. So I'm just making us some soup but at the moment I feel very tall as I'm leaning over our cooker <laughs> but it's just because we're on uh, Port Tack and uh, oh, but anyway it's all the fun and games of sailing Gear. I'm going to get Beverly to insert a video of our track because <laughs> I've been exercising. Beverly once went to the doctors and uh, they were doing blood pressure checks and all that sort of stuff. And they said, How many hours exercising do you do a day? Oh, maybe 14. I haven't quite got up to that level of exercise today but I've certainly been working those sheets Is the crew is tired. There is a mutiny. 
long salty that was. No, I'm just tired and um, I just said to Bev that, you know, we have, we're still a good six nautical miles away from gear. And I just said, you know, I'm getting tired and to sail it, it's going to take us a good while. So, yeah, I'm afraid to say the engine's on. don't like it, but if you've got a tired crew, you've got to just sort of like say you're tired and be honest. We're in. We're at Gear. Um, I had wanted to go to an anchorage here at Gear, but we came in so late that we just went for the mooring field. And uh, I have to say, thank you, Retro Tape. It's just brilliant. They put Retro Tape on all the boys. So uh, that plus uh, the torch we have just meant that I could find them. So Retro Tape is definitely a really, really good thing. And um, I think uh, we're now going to put Retro Tape on our anchor ball because it really helped. I'll just point out at this stage that you were wimping out on me as we approached the mooring field because I was doing seven knots in pitch blackness and couldn't see a thing and you were convinced there was boats in front of us. That is true because you were doing seven knots coming into a mooring field and I'm like, whoa, man! <laughs> it's a bit dark. It was, but we did it. We did, but anyway, we're passing out now. Good night. Well, we're uh, in gear. <laughs> and we're going to be leaving in what I call balmy conditions. Yeah, it's uh, starting to rain, which is not the best, really. So there you go. But uh, we just wanted to talk for a minute about coming into gear at night, didn't we? Yeah. Um, now, hopefully your chart has been updated, but our chart certainly hasn't. Uh, there is a East Cardinal as you come in. Yes, as you approach this, I was on the helm uh, when it's coming in, and there's two East Cardinals, they flash three times, white lights. Uh, one is on a reef over here, just beside us, and one is way up at the entrance, guarding a reef near the corner. Uh, don't try and cut the corner, whatever you do. We spent quite a bit of time looking for the North Cardinal over that way that guards the reef, didn't we? Uh, that's the other reef, and that basically was not lit. Yes. Um, just the two East Cardinal Cardinals were lit, uh -huh. uh, with one, uh, the one inside being um, much dimmer than the one uh, out outside. to sea. My next surprise was the red lights on the pontoon. It turned out they weren't at the end of the pontoon, they are about halfway up it. <laughs> Um, the retro tape that they've put on the boys was an absolute godsend. Mm. And uh, some time ago, with our YouTube earnings, I bought a torch. You did. And that was really, really used quite a bit. Uh, as I just we, we basically call it a headlight on a handle because it's like it's like a main beam of a car headlight, isn't it? It is. That was the kind of lumens I was looking for, headlight, <laughs> headlight capability. But there's uh, retro tape on um, the oh, boys. Oh, the place set up like like a hundred cat size. It was it was wonderful. Yeah. So it just meant that I um, shone the torch at the boy I wanted, and glory of glory. Now one other they thing. They have all got pickup boys now. Great. One other thing as well is that when we were on the mirroring boy here some, some weeks back, mm. I left the anchor light on. Even though we're not anchored, we're on a mirroring boy. And a boat came in at silly o'clock. And I'm glad we had the mirroring light on. I wasn't convinced we could see the mirroring field particularly well. And I turned our deck light on just to make a stand out even more. Um, coming in last night, it is incredibly hard to see anything in here. There is very, very little light. And boats that have their anchor lights on, I, I actually bless them because... Yeah. There was one boat that had its anchor light on, and there was like 10, 12 boats. Yep. Um, but it just, that one boat, yes, you could see it, you knew where you were going. Even, even better for me, it was on AIS, and I knew exactly that it was at the south edge of the mirroring field, but that was just dumb luck. Um, so in the end we just took the outermost mirroring boy. The first one we came across on the outside is what we took. Wasn't mm. it? And we just got on, abandoned everything, tied the seal down and just left it. Yeah. Um, it's just so... I was just so bushed. It was ridiculous. It was a long, uh, old day. It was a long, old day. Um, and we're about to have another one. 
we are I'm just in case I haven't got any night hours I'm going to collect some more just to add to my uh, collection. Night hour collection. Yeah today's plan is to sail back to Northern Ireland um, we did have some wind a minute ago hopefully we still do it's due to come up later in the day particularly further south from here but at the minute it's just drizzling on us isn't it yeah and um, I'm on the helm today so I'm gonna get wet yeah so it's gonna be foul tide against us for a bit but luckily for us at the time we're leaving the tide is minimizing and we're hoping it won't be too bad hmm. oh well let's see what happens yeah <laughs> 